It is difficult to study one combat axe without studying them all. I had planned on reviewing just the Rashad Mark II, but instead expanded my review to cover all combat axes currently available in Darktide. This is going to be a deep one, so let's get into it. The Rashad Mark II combat axe has seven attacks. Light 1, Light 2, and Light 3 are all strike downs. Light 1 and 2 are 45 degree strikes and Light 3 is a horizontal sweep coming from right to left. All three light attacks can cleave two groaners. Heavy 1 and 2 are mostly vertical strike downs. They too can cleave two groaners. The special attack is an uppercut that cleaves two groaners. The push attack is a horizontal sweep from left to right and can cleave three groaners, three poxwalkers, three drag or scab stalkers, two drag or scab flamers, two drag or scab bruisers, two drag or scab shotgunners, and two scab shooters. The special light combo access is light two after the special attack. The special heavy combo gives you access to heavy two. The push attack light combo transitions from push attack to light one. Finally, the push attack heavy combo provides heavy one for the follow-up. Light attack spam is light one, light two, then light three, forever. Heavy attack spam is heavy one, then heavy two, repeating. The Intex Mark V combat axe has seven attacks that are identical to the Rashad in execution. Light one, light two, and light three are identical to the Rashad. However, if your cleave targets modifier is high enough, the one I'm testing is 80%, you can cleave not only two groaners, but also two poxwalkers and two drag or scab stalkers. Heavy 1 and 2 are mostly vertical strike downs. The cleave targets modifier for heavies will provide the same amount of cleave as light attacks. The push attack is a horizontal sweep from left to right. It, at 80% cleave targets, can cleave three of the following. Groaners, poxwalkers, Drag or scab bruisers, drag or scab stalkers, scab shooters, drag or scab flamers, and drag or scab shotgunners. It can also cleave two drag ragers and two drag or scab gunners. The special light combo, special heavy combo, push attack light combo, push attack heavy combo, light attack spam, and heavy attack spam are identical to the Rashad, except that the Antex's special attack is a stab. The Ackley's Mark 8 Combat Axe has 8 attacks. Light 1, Light 2, and Light 3 are all strike downs. Light 1 and 3 are mostly vertical, and Light 2 is a 45 degree strike coming from right to left. All 3 light attacks can hit only one target. Heavy 1 is a horizontal attack from right to left and can only hit one target. Heavy 2 and Heavy 3 are both vertical strike downs and can cleave two groaners. The special attack is an uppercut and can also cleave two groaners. Push attack is a horizontal sweep from left to right and can cleave the same targets as the shot. The special light combo access is light two after the special attack. The special heavy combo gives you access to heavy two. The push attack light combo transitions from push attack to light three. Finally, the push attack heavy combo provides heavy three for the follow up. Light attack spam is light one, light two, then light three forever. Heavy attack spam is heavy one, heavy two, heavy three, then heavy two to heavy three in repetition. You cannot get back to heavy one until you stop attacking. Transitioning to light attacks will still not grant you access to heavy one. Modifiers. Axes are tough to roll well, and their modifiers are slightly complex. Three of the five modifiers are critical to its damage profile, one is important to its functionality, and the fifth needs to not be terrible as it dictates how you move with the weapon. For all of the combat axes, damage, penetration, and first target all should be well rolled. Damage is self-explanatory and the spread is identical across the axes. First target increases the power of your light and heavy attacks against the first target you hit. It too is identical across the axes. Being that combat axes are, for the most part, 
single target weapons. These two stats are critical. Penetration dictates how much flak and carapace armor affect the damage of your light and heavy attacks. It's important to note that the min and max carapace damage for heavy attacks on the Ackley's Mark 8 is lower than that of the Rashad and Antax variants by 12% on the low and 9% on the high end. Mobility is your dump stat, but to me at least, I want enough value here to not have a negative sprint speed and to have a dodge limit of 5. For the Rashad and Ackley's, Finesse dictates how much extra damage your weak spot and critical hits do. It also increases your attack speed. The damage multiplier's stat spread is evenly allocated across percentage points in Finesse like most things. However, the attack speed scales in a diminishing fashion. The more you have of it, the less it's worth. Stat spread for attack speed is 0.0, .0 to 14.29. At 68%, the value, if spread evenly, should be around 9.7. As you can see, I'm at 10.18, a difference of 0.48. On an Ackley's with 79%, the value I should have is 11.28. However, I have 11.63, a difference of 0.35. Regardless, you are getting more than you should, but the extra attack speed you gain is lower the higher your finesse score is. On a side note, for the psychers out there, Quell speed functions the opposite of attack speed. The more you have, the more each point is worth. If you look at the values on your staff, the unobtainable 20% of quell speed beyond the cap of 80% is worth 57%. More on that some other time. The Antax has the cleave targets modifier instead of finesse, and we covered what that provides during the previous section. Blessings. All or nothing. Power is increased by 7.5% to 20% at empty stamina, scaling down linearly to full stamina. This seems to work as it's supposed to on all three axes. I like the idea behind this blessing. Everything is bearing down on me, I'm out of stamina, and I gain some power to get out of a tough situation. In reality, I'd rather just gain power from attacking than having depleted resources. This would be useful if you push attack frequently, or if you have terrible stamina regen, like the veteran, and you sprint everywhere. I'd use it if I had it, but to me it's fairly lukewarm, and I'd be looking to replace it. Brutal Momentum Ignore enemy hit mass for 1.5 to 4.5 seconds on weak spot kill. This dark tide community favorite gets as much attention as it does for good reason. On the combat axe, I stopped caring about the number of targets that can be cleaved and damaged at 12 scab ragers using a light one from the Rashad. The cleave on heavy one for the Mark 8 cleaves only 9 scab ragers. Pathetic. All kidding aside, brutal momentum is absurdly good. Decapitator. Plus 10 to 25% rending for 5 seconds on enemy one shot. Stacks 3 to 5 times. I have some issues with this blessing. First and foremost, if you hit a target more than one time before killing it, it won't count toward your stacks, making it even less worthwhile than an axe with brutal momentum. Second is that it gives you rending rather than brittleness, which would be more helpful for the team. Finally, it has a five second window, which seems like a lot, but in practice for what you have to do to gain stacks is entirely too small. In a perfect scenario, like in the Sycanium, I can't kill a crusher before the stacks fall off. The many other methods available in this game to deal with armor make this blessing even less worthwhile. If you want more damage against a crusher on a combat axe, use head taker, decimator, thrust, all or nothing, shred, thunderous, or limb splitter. Basically everything but brutal momentum and decapitator will provide more predictable and consistent results. Pretend this blessing doesn't exist. Decimator. Continuously chaining more than two attacks gives plus four to 10% power, stacks five times. Decimator is a very strong blessing. It has the potential to provide the most power to all of your attacks across all blessings for the combat axes. Its drawbacks are that you don't get your first stack of power until your second strike and you can't miss. 
missing an attack, or ceasing your attack chain resets your stack count to zero. The description is a bit misleading since it says more than two attacks, but it begins applying stacks on the second hit. Additionally, if you don't end your attack chain but miss an attack, you will begin at zero stacks, but you will get your first stack on your first hit. In all, it's a solid blessing whose drawbacks are less than the description would lead you to believe. Head Taker Plus 2 to 5% power for 3.5 seconds on hit. Stacks 5 times. Power wise, this is a watered down version of Decimator, but doesn't have any of the drawbacks that Blessing does. You get your first stack on your first strike, and you have a 3.5 second window to hit a target to add to and or refresh your stacks. I tend to run this frequently. Limb Splitter. The first attack in a chain has 10 to 25% increased power. Chain attacks have 10% reduced power. While I'd love to explore break points this blessing could provide, I just don't have that kind of time and this video is long as it is. However, for this blessing, I'd be looking for anything that allows me to reduce my hits to kill by one while not modifying my normal hits to kill for that enemy. It's also important that the enemy you're making this trade off for is important enough to you to potentially increase your hits to kill for other enemies. There's a lot to explore with this blessing. I'd really like to make an Ackley's Mark 8 with Brutal Momentum and Limb Splitter to see what Horde Clear is like with the uh, heavy one. So far, no luck in rolling such a weapon. Shred. Plus 2 to 5% bonus critical chance on chained hit. Stacks 5 times. As far as I can tell, this blessing is functioning as it is supposed to. You get your first stack on your second strike. Be aware that, just like Decimator, if you stop attacking or miss an attack, you drop to zero stack instantly. If you watched my unlimited zealot ability uptime video, you'll know why this blessing rocks. Personally, I only run this blessing for that particular setup on zealot preacher. If you have a build that is crit dependent, this is a blessing that will provide a lot of it. Thrust. Up to plus 5 to 20% power, scaling with charge time, heavy attacks. Stacks three times. Thrust, like on most weapons, is a great blessing. It has the potential to provide up to 60% power on a fully charged heavy attack at tier 4. If block cancelling to deliver single heavy attacks, when paired with limb splitter, you can reach an astounding 85% power. It's a pretty niche use case for that though, but it's still pretty amazing. Thunderous. Target receives one to four stacks of 5% brittleness on hit, last five seconds. This blessing works for both heavy and light attacks, unlike the latrine shovel against Carapace. Black is not affected by this blessing. However, it can apply brittleness to a mauler through light attacks to the body increasing the damage to the carapace weak spot. If you really want to eke out some extra damage to carapace, pick up Thunderous. It's a bit too niche for me. If it also applied to flak armor, I'd say it's worth considering. I don't know what the breakpoint is for cleave targets that you should be shooting for on the Antax Mark V. I vaguely remember from a video by Italian Spartacus that the value required for cleaving two pox walkers is 75%. I haven't tested this. Furthermore, I don't know if this allows you to cleave all the other targets, 80% allows you to. I also don't know if Vanessa's attack speed has a low end breakpoint where it begins being worth less than the next higher value. If any of you know the answer to any of these unknowns, it would be great if you could leave a comment to solidify the knowledge base of the community. I performed all testing on my Zealot with no feats active in Damnation Titanium. I used gray weapons in the 350 to 360 range with decent stat spreads for all attack and cleave showcases. I upgraded to green weapons and rolled to plus stamina for all three combat axes to mitigate any impact for testing. I then upgraded to blue weapons to test all blessings. I tested tier two of all blessings as I have all of them and to minimize required resources. There may be issues with specific blessing tiers in their interaction with each combat axe mark, as we saw with Fire Frenzy 3 on auto guns. Covering three weapons in one video is a lot to go through and requires many resources. For fun, 
I thought I'd share with you the total cost. This round of testing sent me back 46,000 credits and 3,300 plasteel. That's roughly five to seven damnation runs worth of plasteel. A small price to pay for a very clear understanding of the Combat X family and what they have to offer. Thank you for taking time out of your day to explore the different flavors of the Combat Axe currently available with me. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like. And if you want to see more content like this, then please subscribe if you haven't already. Either or both of these would help me out quite a bit. With that, I'm out. Peace.